Hey everyone, John Moran here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be talking about keyword research. Now, we're going to be using a tool called Google Search Console, and if you don't have Google Search Console, definitely activate it now, because it doesn't go back retroactively, like it doesn't tell you your organic ranking and positioning um, prior to when you started uh, the Search Console instance. So I'm going to show you how to start the Google Search Console and one thing to really look for, because if you get this wrong, you kind of waste a couple days, so I'm going to tell you how to do it right. But in this video, we're going to be sharing with you how to use your organic traffic you're already ranking for and what to look for when you want to develop a keyword strategy off of your organic rankings. Now, where this is useful is your website already organically ranks. It already has organic ranking for most likely a brand name and a few other keywords, um, possibly a couple hundred or possibly a couple thousand, just depending upon how old your, your business is, your website is. But using Google Search Console, I'll show you a way to identify some key key performance indicators that are saying this keyword, if you are using it on paid traffic, could possibly have a really good impact on your business. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's a kind of a part one series of keyword research that I'm going to be doing. So it's going to be a few parts of this. I don't exactly know how long uh, we're going to be doing uh, a Google search console. We're going to be doing a Google um, search that I'm going to show, share with you how to look for other keywords from a Google search. Then we're going to be using Google Keyword Planner. Uh, I'm going to skip kind of the third party tools like ISP, SEMrush, SPIFU, just because I find those to be like 40 to 50% accurate, which means, you know, you're going to be 100% right or you're going to be 100% wrong. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the tools that we use uh, mainly. Now we do use uh, ISP, and SPIFU, and SEMrush, but just as a indicator. We don't really use it as like basing hard decisions and using our clients hard earned ad spend to it, but we use them to review them and say, is there anything that we possibly miss and what could we look into further? So this, I guess, will be probably a three-part series. So let's begin. So the first thing that you want to know is uh, on the top left here, this is going to be blurred out, but this is just showing you your, um, your name uh, of your website. And here's what's important is Google actually, uh, not Google, Google crawls whatever website I should say that your website resolves to. Now, this is important because you may think that your website resolves to a non-WWW. Maybe your website resolves to a WWW. Google actually sees two versions of your website, a non-WWW version and a WWW version. Here's what I mean by that, is if you look up here on the screen, our website here shows a no WWW and SLA.com. Now, when you double click on it, you see there's no WWW here. But if you go to Google, and it looks like, hey, this doesn't resolve to a WWW. But when you click on it and then click again, you can see this is what it actually resolves to. Now, this is important because if you use a non-WW version of your website and your website does resolve to a WWW, then <clears throat> your, let me go here, you're possibly going to get um, like one-tenth of the data or possibly none at all. So Google's going to index one site, and that's the site that your organic traffic revol uh, resolves to. So make sure that you check that first, because if you get it wrong, it's going to be blank, and this isn't going to help you at all. So when you do um, start your Google Search Console, you're going to have to verify it, and verifying it usually is um, it is a way for you to tell Google Search Console, hey, I own this website. You can do it with analytics. You can do it with Get, do Google Tag Manager. You can do it by dropping an HTML code in the header, just your simple claiming of your Google property like you would with Merchant Center or, or Google Ads. So make sure you claim the right version of your site, the WWW or not. After you do that, and then wait, you know, I would say at least a week or two, at least before you start to use this as a um, as a good pinpointing uh, of, a, of a keyword research. But if you already have this, or maybe you had it in three years ago and you haven't checked it since, here's what you're going to want to do. Go to the performance tab of the um, of the, the, the system. And you're going to want to look at the last three months. I usually like the last three months because this is going to be indicative of the, you know, kind of last quarter's organic traffic. Um, so I usually like to look at the last three months and then make sure you have all four of these checked because as you can see on the bottom, right, if you uncheck these, you lose the columns down here in the bottom, right. When you check them, you're going to need to know what the position is, what the click the rate. And here's why this is important. Uh, there's going to be some keywords here that are blurred out. This is actually the client's uh, brand name, these two here. And I'm just going to show you the first, I would say, uh, 100 rows. And we're going to blur out the client's name. So if you ever see a, a, you know, a, a text keyword that goes by that is blurred out, just assume that's the client's name. But here's what you're going to want to look for. <clears throat> this company sells uh, luggage. It's an online luggage retailer. 
And we run smart shopping uh, pretty much exclusively for this client. Uh, that's the only really campaign that we really use because we're getting a thousand ROAS. So it's, it's running really, really well. But if we were going to start a search campaign in addition to that, and let's say we wanted to branch out and, and start a search campaign, possibly a DSA campaign, here's something that we're going to look at is what keywords are we are ranking for organically that are maybe a little bit too far down the page to give us a lot of traffic, but getting us a good click through rate. And here's why this is important. Think about Google when people are searching. If your position is number seven, eight or nine, 10, possibly 12, 13, 14, like you're found on page two, and your click through rate is above two to 3%, that's indicative of the keyword that you're not really ranking for being positioned low enough, but still getting a good click through rate meaning that they've searched through all the ads, they've searched through all of the other listings, and when they found yours, they said, aha, that's what I'm looking for. It's a high click-through rate on a low-positioned keyword, which means far down, means that they've looked at everyone else and then chose you. What if that? What if you showed up at the keyword at the top? Since Google Search Console doesn't tell you conversion data, it just tells you where you're ranking, how many impressions you got, how many clicks you got, what your click-through rate is. So you want to extrapolate some information out there. You want to kind of you know, do a deduction of what is what is really valuable here. There's you know things that you're going to get a you know good position and ton of click the rate, but that's branded. Or you might get a kind of mediocre click the rate, but there's only like 100 searches for it. So man, maybe it's not really too important to you. So you want to look at you know high amount of impressions, high amount of clicks, good click the rate, but a low position because all we're going to do is we're going to take that keyword, start bidding on it. We're going to put you from key like play, position number nine, which is at the bottom of the page, to possibly one or two. And that's going to explode your click-through rate. And if you can see that people are clicking on your organic listing because they finally found you at the bottom of the first page or page two, and the click-through rate is high, which means people do that consistently at, over the last three months especially, I would take that keyword and start bidding on it. And here's what I mean. So with this company selling luggage, let's look at how we find one of those keywords. So we look down and say, okay, position number five. Wow, that's halfway down the page. 10% click the rate is average of your second position. A 10% click the rate you can expect if you have a position number two. We're getting a 10% click the rate on position number five, which means every 350 people that search, 35 click on it. Well, what is this? Hontas Milano luggage. Hmm. We're not bidding on that as a key phrase. You're showing up organically for it. But what if you show, showed up position number one or two? How would that how would that change your results? Well, we don't know because Google doesn't give us the um, give us the results of your organic like they used to back in the good old days. But this is saying if I'm getting a 10% click through rate over the course of three months and I'm halfway down the page, that means they're bypassing a ton of other people. So this is one that I would look to test. This would be one that I would add in my keyword research and I would build an ad group for it. I'd build the ad for it that sends right to the Hontas Milano section on the website. And I would use that keyword and in a broad sense and then start to identify how that ad group is performing. Let's begin. Wow, an 18.4% click the rate on Cavalier uh, luggage, but we're position 1.8. Should we bid on that? Eh, possibly. You're already getting organic ranking for it, so maybe you know you can you can bid on it if you want. It's up to you. If you need to spend a good budget, if you need to find all relevant keywords, yeah, absolutely bid on this. But not gonna be something that is gonna be extremely valuable. Uh, unless you know that you can control that that type of uh, that keyword very well, get a low click, you know, and, and make sure that paying for that traffic is worth it. But because it's not really going to give you a better position, but your ad copy is going to be updated, and you're going to get you know, protection from ever slipping down the ranks. <clears throat> Let's look at another one. All right, 2.1% click through rate. Okay, average position 8.3. Hmm. Well, my click through rate's low, and my by or not low. Industry average click through rate's half a percent to two percent. But I'm position 8.3. Is it really relevant? Yeah, maybe this could be extremely relevant. Do we sell solid luggage on the website? Yes. Um, we're position 8, which means are they now clicking on the ads because someone else is bidding on the brand name? Are they looking for solid and they find the brand name first and then they just don't go down to organically? Maybe. Why would 2% of the people that search go all the way down position number 8 and click on our ad? Maybe the price shopping. Do we have competitive pricing? Yes, we do. Or no, we don't. Then don't. But if we, yeah, we do. We're very competitive in that pricing. Let's put us at the top. It must be the first one to be considered um, when people are shopping to see can we beat everyone else's price? And I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the top position. Plus, there's a lot of traffic around that. Let's keep going. 
what other keywords here do we have a low position and a good click-through rate? Well, let's see here. Well, kind of the same trend, Cavalier Suitcase. Almost a 12% click-through rate, position 3.6. We're almost halfway down the page, and we have an 11.8 click-through rate. Cavalier looks to be a really good opportunity. Each time they go all the way down the page and find us, they click. Possibly no one else bidding on the ads. Maybe the manufacturer's out of business and we have a ton of inventory. Assess the keywords and see is it part of your keyword strategy and appropriate. Let's keep going. Let's look for another one. Man, 15.2. This is on halfway down page two. We have an 8.5% click the rate. How many people go to the half, uh, go to two pages and then halfway down the second page, click 8.5%. That's usually 2.3 average position click the rate. We're 15 and we're getting an 8.5. What is it? Briggs Riley sale. Excellent. Do we have Briggs and Riley? I don't know. Do you? That's what you have to ask yourself. Is this appropriate for me? If so, and you have competitive pricing and people are looking for sales, bingo. Great, great keyword to bid on. So you can see <clears throat> it's indicative of are there other ads running? Are there manufacturers? Are people price shopping? Is it relevant to you? Do you have competitive pricing? You can obviously apply all of these same principles to lead generation as you can with e-commerce. But using these type, this type of keyword research is you're already leveraging your organic traffic ranking who is already bringing you sales. And you're simply just taking the gold nuggets and bringing them right up to the top. If you can bring them right up to the top and you see good results from it, now you have a two-pronged strategy bid more against those keywords that you have at the top, maybe get a little more aggressive in your bidding and work towards you know, optimizing your organic ranking to show up better. If I'm getting a 18 or like, you know, 12% click the rate on pit number eight, um, like here, like the, the Briggs and Riley, um, oops. Anyway, Briggs and Riley, if I'm getting a good click the rate being so far low, if I got the number one spot for paid and that works. Now I know from my search engine optimization, I'm going to work to possibly do more blogs, more backlinking, more content, and bring that, that organic listing to the top. And now I've taken one plus one equals three. I've identified good traffic organically. And the plus one is adding my Google ads campaign to it to get a better rank for it to see if it works. And one plus one equals three, because now I have better ranking um, in my Google ads. I'm starting to spend more and make more money. Plus I know how to take my SEO and bring that up to the top. I know what keyword to optimize for. So this is how using Google search console can do a keyword research for you to develop a possibly new or different strategy. Capitalize on the market that you're already capturing just more of and using these key performance indicators that I've shown you here in search console the last three months to identify what keywords make the most amount of sense to bid on. And you don't even need to use this to start there. Let's just say you've been running Google ads and you have SEO for two years. Hop in there and see if there's any anything that you're not doing right now. Maybe you think, well, I've gone through all the keywords I can think of. This is a great opportunity to hop into your search console, see what you're ranking for and say, maybe there's other ones that you didn't think about here, whether it's you know service-based or, or product-based, whatever it may be. So hopefully this, uh, this helps out. And um, I'm John Ram with Solutions 8. And please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things that we love and uh, <laughs> that make us internet nerd famous. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye.